I'm going to talk about steps you can take or measures you can take uh, to prevent certain transactions from coming through. Uh, so for example, let's say you have a huge catering dish or you have certain uh, items in your inventory that tends to uh, trigger chargebacks or uh, you may be sell selling it and somehow you've noticed that you're getting chargebacks based off of those items or your menu in general. So I'm going to show you some things you can do to help uh, mitigate that. So when you log into your back end of your Clover dashboard, <clears throat> Clover has something called fraud prevention tools. So these are very nice, it will come in handy and you can set rules for this. So if you go onto account and setup on your Clover dashboard, once you go to account and setup, you press, you choose fraud prevention tools right here. Okay. Once you choose that, you can set some uh, rules to help uh, you uh, mitigate or combat um, you know, people trying to use credit cards that do, that do not belong to them or other things that kind of can happen that creates chargebacks. So as you can see here, I have uh, several options here. So feel free to check back this, check back the screen often because Clover may add more uh, tools here. But we have a few tools here. We have the address verification system. <clears throat> so if a postcard does not match the credit card on file, it will avoid the transaction. Uh, you can do AVS system error. So if the last three digits of the card don't match, you can make it not accept the card. <clears throat> but remember, um, these other addresses, street address, you have to enable delivery uh, or asking for the address uh, to also enforce these rules as well. Now, when you go to card verification value here, uh, this says CVC does not match when provided. CVC cannot be verified when provided. Issuer does not participate when provided. So you can um, utilize these tools um, to, to automatically decline cards where these rules do not match, right? So if the CVV, CVV on the back of the card uh, does not match, it'll decline the card. So it'll decline it like that. So another thing you can do is transaction limits, right? Typically, a chargebacks happen when there's a, a bigger transaction like over, over $50 or over $100. You don't necessarily want to do this <clears throat> uh, because the problem that is you may have a legitimate customer who's ordering a big transaction from you and you may prevent them from ordering from you. So only do this if you're like a coffee shop and your average ticket is 20 bucks and then all of a sudden you get a ticket for $500, then you may want to add a rule for that. But go ahead, go through these information. It'll tell you which kind of cards to um, deny and, or which type of transactions to deny. So as you can see, there's several rules here that you can implement here. Transaction total is greater than the set amount. Number of transaction per IP greater than set amount, right? Um, so you can limit it by that as well. So when I click on this, it says limit, uh, set a time period, okay? So you can limit it uh, during which hours it applies. Um, so you can put a limit, let's say $100. So, okay, $100. Okay, let's say it's between the hours of like 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. You don't want transactions of this magnitude or this high amount to go through. Uh, all transactions, approved transactions, so you can do that as well. So again, these are just some additional tools you can use and you, all, you will only utilize these tools if you are getting chargebacks and if you're trying to mitigate that or prevent that or lower that. Additional steps that you can do on your on your website. Uh, so for example, you can, uh, let's say I'm, I'm a customer, I'm ordering from here and I'm ordering a lot of stuff, right? And during the checkout process, as I order, uh, you can inform the customer that, you know, transactions over $100, um, it has to be, um, ID has to be utilized inside the store, right? So you can say, you can write a custom message here, say transactions over $100, um, uh, please bring your ID uh, to the business so they can verify it, right? Um, you can do something like that to help, um, you know, prevent um, chargebacks from happening. So just make sure to make it clear what, you, what you're trying to accomplish here. Uh, and just let the customer know, um, you know, that, or you can say here, like for example, let's say you're not accepting orders more than $100 between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. because you don't want to carry that much of a big bill at that time of the night. Uh, so you can say that we do not accept transactions larger than $100 uh, after midnight or between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. or something like that. 
Um, that way, because some businesses, when you go to their businesses, they'll say on there, we don't accept uh, bills larger than $20, right? So you can do something like that. Uh, you can write that. Uh, you, can, you can create that rule here to help you mitigate that, okay? Uh, again, chargebacks, again, it's as for us, uh, for uh, chargebacks are something that, you know, can be prevented. Um, usually, if, um, if a chargeback occurs, uh, typically what you can do is go in the back end of your clover and find ways to um, dispute it. Or you can call the customer that did a chargeback because there's something called friendly chargebacks. Friendly chargebacks are where people do a chargebacks uh, thinking that they don't rec thinking they did not order from that place. Uh, so they may have forgot. So they may have ordered from here, but then later on they look at their uh, menu and they go, oh, Maybe uh, I don't recognize that business, but they probably forgot what the business was called. So you can always call the customer back and ask them, hey, what was, what was the reason for the chargeback? Is it because the food wasn't good? Is it because, uh, what was the reason? They'll tell you, and, they, and, and, they'll, and, 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 and if they tell you, you can correct it right away. They may say, oh, I didn't get my drink. Uh, you only gave me half my order, or my order was missing. Then you can say, oh, let me correct that for you, and then they can um, go on their credit card, call, contact their credit card company, and then uh, stop the chargeback that way. Uh, both both parties are happy okay so these are some tools uh, check back with us often um, on on our youtube videos and we'll give you some more tools and tips that you can utilize to uh, help prevent uh, chargebacks from happening uh, again chargebacks typically happens mostly at electronic stores and high ticket items but again it can happen to anybody uh, so you want to remain vigilant and protect yourself and just be on the lookout because there's not really a foolproof way to stop it because um, chargebacks, um, you know, the, the, the credit card companies want to protect the customers, right? Because uh, let's say I order from a business and when I go pick it up, I get something completely different and that's not what I order. So they may do a chargeback, right? So that's why chargebacks can happen. And there's a lot, they could be friendly chargebacks or, or it can be a chargeback, which may have happened with where somebody uh, used somebody else's card without their permission. All right. Uh, hopefully this video helped out. Uh, thank you so much for watching.